Yes, I have it in my hand. The Blackmagic ATEM Mini Pro is here and it is a fantastic device. If you wanna know more about this, I'm gonna be uploading a whole bunch of videos over the next few weeks onto my channel about how to use this. Also doing live streams as well, so that you can see the quality out of the box from the Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro, and lots more stuff coming up on this channel. So if you're new here, hit the subscribe button, make sure you've turned on the notification bell as well, so you don't miss any of those. But for this video, I want to go back and answer all of the questions that you sent in from my last video, which was the announcement for this. There was a whole bunch of questions. So I'm gonna do a quick fire A10 Mini Pro Q&A video. Higgy Pop asks, by the way, I really like that name. Uh, do you know if the multi-view output will allow you to monitor the program audio through a display? So if that display has speakers or a headphone output, can you hear the program output? The answer is yes. And again, in a previous video, which I'll link either up with the I button or down in the description. I actually talk about doing this for, and using this as a method for previewing the audio because the ATEM line or the ATEM mini line doesn't have an audio out. Um, but one way I found of getting around this is I take my HDMI output from my ATEM mini pro and take it into a black magic video assist which does have an uh, an audio output on and then i can hear everything there's no delay it's perfect so yes audio is passed down the line of the hdmi out and so you can listen to it if your your monitor has speakers or an hdmi output uh, sorry or an audio output the second question comes in from zaheed and he asks if i convert the hdmi signal to sdi and then back from sdi to hdmi for the a10 mini will the color grading still work and essentially a lot of people are asking this question to get longer cable runs for their cameras i didn't have any converters here to test myself because of lockdown but uh, i shot a message over to my contact at blackmagic and said what's the deal can we have can we convert to SDI and then back to HDMI and, and still retain tally and camera control? And what they said was because HDMI, they're relying on the bi-directional, so to being able to get a camera feed down one way to the a Mini, but also send back data the other way via the HDMI. That's fine, you can do it over HDMI, but SDI is only one direction. It doesn't allow for bi-directional. That's why on the larger cameras like the Ursas, they have an SDI import and an SDI outport because you can't send bi-directional down one cable. So the response I've had from that is unfortunately, uh, it won't be possible to retain the camera control if you're gonna convert HDMI to SDI and SDI to HDMI. You should still get the video feed back. So you, so in essence, you can still extend your cable runs using this method, but you won't be able to use the data or, or the camera control, unfortunately. Next question, Bent asks, will it stream to say Facebook using the internal encoder and then while viewing in multi-view on a computer, also allow the computer to encode and stream to a separate online service? There's a few things here and I just wanna clear it up. Um, the first one being, he mentions viewing in multi-view on a computer. Currently with the ATEM Mini Pro, the multi-view has to come out of the HDMI output. So you wouldn't be able to view the multi-view on a computer unless you were taking that HDMI output and then bring it in for a capture card, for example, to get the viewing on the computer. So that's the first thing. Uh, what you take into a computer through the USB-C output on the back of the ATEM Mini Pro isn't selectable, that has to be the program out. The selectable part is what comes out of the HDMI output on the ATEM Mini Pro. And on the front of the device, you'll see here, these are where you select what comes out of that HDMI output. So you've got source one, two, three, and four, then you've got multi-view, and then you've got program there. So those buttons will select what, what comes out of that HDMI output. But to answer the question I think you're getting to, Ben, about streaming to two locations, it is possible because what you could do is you could take your program output from the ATEM Mini Pro, use the internal live streaming engine and send that to Facebook as you've suggested. And then using the USB-C on the, on the back, plug that into your computer, uh, PC or Mac. That then shows up as a webcam input. You get the program output there uh, as a webcam input on your device open up a software encoder like OBS, for example, and you get that same feed again, and you can even add additions to it, like overlays or additional graphics, and then stream that to another platform. So there, that is one way of doing it. 
There is a, another way as well. If you wanted to stream to multiple platforms, you could, and we'll talk about editing the XML file for streaming profiles of the A10 Mini Pro. But what you can do is you can add in a third party service like Restream or Caster so that the A10 Mini's internal live streaming engine pushes to that cloud service and then they do the distribution for you. So they then send it to Facebook and to YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, you can have it going to as many platforms as you want from there. So it's one stream coming from your A10 Mini Pro and then they do the distribution. And I'm gonna have a video showing you exactly how to do that very soon on my channel. So if you're interested in streaming to multiple locations at once from the A10 Mini Pro, make sure you're subscribed, hit the bell because that video will be coming probably within the next week. Got a question here about bit rates for recording and live streaming. It says, hi, I appreciate your review of the A10 Mini Pro. Thank you very much. I have one question. Is it possible to record to external USB disk in a higher bit rate different from streaming bit rate? For example, can I record to USB disk in 30 megabits per second while I'm streaming at nine to YouTube? It's a really good question. If you're wanting to stream and record at the same time, you can do that on the A10 Mini Pro, but it will be at the same bitrate that you select for streaming. You'll notice in the ATEM software control, there's an output tab. That is where you select your quality. By default, there's six options there, ranging from streaming low, streaming medium, streaming high, and then hyperdeck low, medium, and high as well. And I'll put on screen now what the bit rates are for all of those. If you want to find out more information, it is in the ATEM Mini Pro manual on Blackmagic's websites as well. Um, but it ranges from about, I think, two to three megabits per second is the lower end of the streaming, up to somewhere, I think, around 45 to maybe 90 megabits per second for the Hyperdeck uh, High. And of course, they depend on whether you are recording or inputting a high frame rate as well. So there'll be a different bit rate for 24, 25, and 30 frames per second as there would be for 50 and 60 frames per second. In all of my testing that I've done so far, I've been using the streaming high setting and have been recording at the same time. And the quality of that looks fantastic, both in the stream and the recording. So extremely usable. Wade Creation Media asks, hi, do you know if the audio outputs on the back will receive live feed audio mixes, multi-channel mics with XLR inputs, uh, for more than two mics, basically receiving audio from a multi-split source that would only take up one of those audio inputs on the back of the A10 mini device. Good question. It's actually something that I've showed and demoed of how to do in my previous videos with the A10 mini. It's exactly the same for the A10 mini pro. You have two mic inputs on the back here. Let's see if we can get it to focus. Two mic inputs on the back there, stereo mini jacks. And what I bought for most of the mixers that I use, they have a quarter inch jack output. So I bought stereo quarter inch jack to mini jack cable. And that works a charm. So for things like the Rode Procaster, I've found it works perfectly with that. Some of my Behringer mixers, you can of course get XLR cables instead of quarter inch jacks for the, the mini jack as well. That will work perfectly fine. Mladenmatic asks, how loud is the cooling fan of this switcher? I have a Roland V1HD and it's so loud that it's almost unusable. I would be willing to say it's pretty much silent. The only time that I hear the fan is when you do an update on this thing, which obviously you, you're not using the switcher anyway, but when you do an update, it, when it first boots up, it fires up the fan at full speed. What I will do is put in a clip of me plugging in the ATEM using a good mic so you can hear or not hear the fan now. Okay, so the sound that you're hearing right now is the ambient sound. The ATEM Mini Pro is off, so anything you're hearing is just background noise here. And uh, let me plug it in. There we go. Absolutely no change in sound whatsoever. Cole's got a question that I've seen asked a few times. He says, do you think you could distribute to an additional monitor through the USB? I need to be able to display the feed to another room as well as live stream. Now I kind of asked Blackmagic about this in terms of there's been some creative suggestions about maybe if you wanted to record and display to an external monitor at the same time, you could use a USB-C hub here and then a USB-C 
H, uh, USB-C to HDMI adapter. So in essence, you're plugging a hub, then your SSD for recording into one port and then a USB-C to HDMI adapter into another and go to a monitor. They say that won't work. Um, unfortunately, that won't work. But I've been trying to think, okay, let's come up with a solution of how to get a HDMI feed to feed a monitor of the program out. And the best I've come up with so far, and it's very much around the house's way, but I think it solves the issue, is you will your setup will be HDMI out will obviously go for your multi-view. You'll then come USB-C out to your computer, which you'll have running OBS. In OBS, you can do the recording as well. So you've got a recording in OBS, but also in OBS, it has an option to send the program out to, via the computer's HDMI, which you then could take to an external monitor. Now, I'm not necessarily re recommending this method, but it is one way of live streaming, recording, and getting an output for, uh, for an external monitor without having to sacrifice the HDMI output for multi-view. Um, so maybe that solves your solution. I hope it does. Jack Chapman wants to know, does the new timecode feature work with other cameras, not just the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras? And the answer to that is currently it is just the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras. I'm using a Sony right now to record this video and the timecode isn't being sent to that. So uh, yeah, to make the most of that feature and the um, one button record all and everything synced, which is a fantastic feature. Like I've got two Black Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4Ks and it works a dream. But to make use of that, you do have to have either the 4K or the 6K Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera. Michael asks, hey Alex, great video. Do you know if they added an audio delay feature in the update for the original Mini or in the Pro version? Really good question, Michael. Uh, it's been something that's been probably the most que asked question on my previous video. In both the A10 Mini Pro and the A10 Mini, there is no audio delay feature. For me, I haven't really, when I've been using the A10 Mini or the Pro, I haven't really noticed much of a sync issue. I do tend, I will say, what I tend to do is take my audio, so again, using this cable, and plug it into the input on my camera, uh, so that I use the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras, I plug that into the microphone input there, and then take the HDMI down the line to the A10 Mini Pro. And that hasn't given me any sync issues, so that could be a possible solution. Um, so yeah, no plans for an audio delay feature in there yet. What I would say though, is if you're really struggling, of course, a lot of software recorders and encoders have an ability to delay audio, so you can delay the audio in OBS by a couple of frames, that's no problem. And of course, the other thing you can do is a lot of mixers have delays built in, so you can take all your audio into a mixer, add the delay there before it then hits the A10 Mini Pro. So either delay the audio before it hits the A10 Mini Pro, or you can delay it after in software like OBS. So I hope that helps if you are experiencing any sync issues with audio. Paddy White Arts asks, is it possible to stream an A10 Mini Pro to Zoom? Yes, it absolutely is. Remember, the A10 Mini and the A10 Mini Pro both are seen by Macs or PCs as webcam inputs. So what that means is you just hook up over USB-C your A10 Mini or A10 Mini Pro to your Mac or PC, open up Zoom, and it will be there for you to select and use both the audio and the video. That's all the questions that I'm gonna do for this week, but I will be doing more next week and the weeks after. So if you have a question that hasn't been answered and you want something answered, put it in the comments below of this video. I'll take a look at that, choose the best, and we'll answer them again next week. If you've also got any suggestions of videos that you wanna see of the A10 Mini Pro, or demonstrations of how to do certain things, let me know in the comments and I can sort that out for you as well. Um, but thanks for watching guys. Make sure you've hit the subscribe button, turned on the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.